Let's change this. Uh, so break through. <sighs> All right, let's see. Can't stay too long because my phone is about to die. Hello, if you can hear me, if you can see me, let me know in the comments. Put your city. Tap the screen for me, y'all, if you don't mind. That helps us get more family members in here. I want to talk for a few minutes about breaking the spirit of poverty off of our lives. Because I keep getting so many emails and inboxes about people being under attack with their finances. And we got to nip this in the butt. Canada is in the building. Orlando is in the building. Shout out to you. We got to get this together because God did not design us to just be subject to the enemy and him attacking our finances and stuff. South Carolina, Mississippi, Texas is in the building. Shout out to you. I was watching you on YouTube on Holy Spirit. Thank you. St. Lucia is in the building. Florida is in the building. Shout out to you. North Carolina is in the building. South Africa is in the building. I can't stay on too long, though, because my phone is on red. Um, the battery is about to die. Memphis is in the building. So I'm going to give y'all um, some quick tips of things that I did. So I'm going to share with, with y'all my testimony and how the Lord you, you broke uh, poverty off my life. Okay, so I was in a season back in 2017. I was broke, busted, disgusted. Sleeping on my parents' couch, lost everything. I was laid off from a job, and it was just seeming like I could not recover from being laid off from that job. So I was forced to move back into my parents' house, had to sleep on their couch, lost everything that I had, my independence. And so I found myself in a place of trying to, I was toiling. Po Postmates, Uber, DoorDash, teaching teaching ESL to Chinese kids. I was doing um, scoring SATs. I was doing all that I can do and still not making no money, still broke. And so I was going on a fast, Trinidad, I was going on a fast during that time because I'm like, there gotta be more to life than this, right? Lord has to be more to life than this. So I was on a fast and I was praying and the Lord told me to start a Facebook page. And at first I was just like, Facebook, my car about to be repossessed. I need some money, God, like, let's be real. But when you really love God and you have a heart for him, you can't tell him no. So I, I launched this Facebook page, didn't really know what to expect of it. That night I launched, I had 10,000 followers, day nine, 100,000 followers. And about a few weeks into it, um, I was watching this lady, I think on YouTube or Facebook, and she was talking about how you could be an Amazon affiliate and how you can make money. So I was building this big audience, right? And she was showing how you can make money off the audience just selling Amazon products. But during that time, the Lord was breaking the spirit of poverty off of my life. And so these are some strategies or tips that he taught me. Well, the first thing, though, I had to do was repent, right? I had to say, God, forgive me for mismanaging money, mishandling money, for not trusting you with my money, for not honoring you with my money. I just repented, right? And any false belief systems that I got from childhood on in regards to money, I just repented for it to be clean. And I also repented on my bloodline because my bloodline was into some stuff. Like my grandfather's family was into some voodoo, voodoo, they was into lottery. Like I repented for all of that just so I'm clean. Cause you know, that stuff can travel down your bloodline. Um, you can read that in the Bible. So the first thing I had to do was repent. The second thing I had to do was, um, get rid of negative thoughts and fear. So what I would do is get a piece of paper and write out every negative thought I had against money. I things like I'm broke. I won't have enough. I had to write all of that stuff out. I had to write all of that stuff out. Any fear that I had, Fear of not having enough, fear that God wouldn't take care of me. I write all of that stuff out, right? So as I begin to write that out, I had to go find scriptures to replace those negative thoughts in my mind, right? So instead of saying, I'm broke, I'm going to say things like, wealth and riches are in my house because that's what the word says. Um, or Deuteronomy 8.18, God has given me power to create wealth. God has given me power to create wealth. And so I would take those scriptures and I would meditate on it day and night. And another thing that I did, I had went on Google and I typed in scriptures about finances, right? And so every scripture that came out, I got a pen in my journal 
And I wrote every scripture that I could find in regards to my notebook was full of scriptures. I wish I still had that notebook to this day. And I would literally go through every day and read them and read the scripture. Just read it, read it, read it, meditate on it, meditate on it. And what that was doing was that was uprooting the spirit of poverty and lack by the word. It was transforming my thinking. It was transforming my word. So I could stop saying things like I'm broke. I could stop saying things like I don't have, I don't this, I don't that. Because I was taking the word and working the word, y'all. The word will work. If you work it and that goes to for any situation, you may be good financially right now. You're healing. You may be thinking, OK, I need healing my body. What you got to do the same thing. Repent. Right. Any negative thoughts you have about healing, write them down. Go find you every healing scripture you can find and, and meditate on them day and night. If you don't if you don't go get like 30 and 40 scriptures, get like three or four, get five and meditate on them every day. Just keep saying them over. Right. And then what I did was. I started to turn those scriptures into declarations. So I would say things like, thank you for the gifts. I would say things like, I decree and I declare that wealth and riches are in my house. I decree and I declare that wealth and riches are in my house. I decree and I declare that God said he would supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. And then I start getting to a place where I say, God, I trust you. You can't fail. You can't lie. I trust you. You can't fail. You can't lie. My dependency on the scriptures was allowing me to trust God as my source and not all those things as the resource because I was toiling. I was working all of those jobs and still not having enough. The more I got into the scriptures, the more I got into my relationship with God. He began to show me what's in your hands. You know, marketing, you know, social media. So maybe you need to do a course on social media. You need to teach other people how to do social media. Um, I think at that time I was doing consulting for pastors and preachers. You know how to make these, vi you know how to make viral videos. You know how to get these sermons to go viral. You know the right pieces uh, to put from the sermon to make it go viral, right? So you charge these preachers to, to help them do their marketing, right? So that's what I was doing in that time. And then the Amazon thing, the lady was teaching about how you can use Amazon. So a lot of the clips that I made go viral, I would go find, like say like if, if I made Sarah Jakes go viral, I would go on Amazon and find Sarah's book, right? Get a affiliate link to be an Amazon affiliate and put in the, in the caption of that video, put the link so you could get Sarah's book. If you like Sarah's sermon, now let's go get her book. And I would start making, and I would, those videos would be so viral. I would make thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. I've done that. John Gray. I've done that with Sarah. I've done that with Michael Todd back in the day. This was in 2017 before they were like big. Um, but that's where I was, right? The Lord was saying, what's in your hands? Think about your gifts. Think about your talents. Think about all of that. Um, I spend time with God daily, every day. I get up between the hours of 12 and 4 a.m. and I go in his presence. It's a really, we talk about that. We're on an intimacy with God challenge now. And the gist of the challenge is to find a place in your house where you and God can meet every day, right? For the next 21 days, pick the same time if you can to meet with him. Pick the same time to meet with him. Hey, is it Josie? Josie? God bless you. What was I saying, y'all? So the first thing I said was repent. Then write out your negative thoughts and your fears. And then we're going to take scripture and replace them. And then we're going to turn the scriptures into declarations, right? And then we're going to give thanks. Thank you, Father, for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Father, for being my healer. Thank you, Father, for being my way maker. Gratitude would open the door, y'all. Gratitude opened the door. When you give, it, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. That means he lives in my praise. So the more that I praise him, what wouldn't he do for me? Papa, I love you. Papa, I'm grateful for you. Papa, you done made a way out of no way. You done paid my rent. You done did this. You done did that. What would he do for me? Because I'm giving him thanks. I'm grateful for what he's doing in my life. I'm grateful for what he's doing in my life. God is listening. You get, you let, you hear God speak through his word. When was the last time you read his word? God always speaks through his word. That's the primary place he'll speak. And how, and do you spend time with him? When you go into prayer, don't just babble. Go into prayer and listen. Have shakwat. Shakwat is a Hebrew word for lay down and, and just be quiet, be still. I was doing that um, not too long ago before I got a, um, had to take a call. But I was literally just sitting in my closet, just sitting in my closet quiet, waiting for him to speak. God, is, he speaks through his word. It's just we have to build up the discipline to want to read his word, right? 
You want to read his word. When you start to fall in love with God, you want to know what he says, right? You want to know his promises. You want to know his character. You do that by the word. You find you a version of the Bible that makes sense to you, right? I got the parallel Bible. It's in my closet. I got the parallel Bible, which means it's a Bible that has four different versions on it. So I can read King James. Thank you for this. I can read King James. I can read Message. I can read NIV. I can read NLT and whatever other thing is in there. And then I got a bunch of other Bibles around here with different versions. You find your Bible that speaks to you. They say statistically NLT, NIV are easy for people to understand. You get one of those. And then I like to read the Bible based on what I'm going through. I do, I do ask Holy Spirit, though, where should I be looking in the Bible? Like the other day, um, he had me in Genesis. I was learning about what it means to be a friend of God. I wanted to understand why did God call Abraham a friend? Why did God call Abraham a friend? Um, Amazon. I got the Bible off Amazon. Just type in parallel Bible Amazon. That's where I got mine from. Um, what, is it, what does it mean to be a friend of God? And then he started to reveal to me. See, even in that, God was speaking. Because I'm like, God, if you call Abraham a friend, <laughs> thank you, Duchess, I want to be your friend too. <laughs> I want those benefits too, God, of being your friend. You know, he told Abraham, you leave your father's house, you leave the country to a place I'm going to show you, and I'm going to bless you. The first thing I learned in that was obedience. When you obey God, there's nothing he wouldn't withhold from you. There's nothing he wouldn't do from you when you obey God. You just got to make a decision to obey God. It's like building a relationship with anybody else, y'all. You, you spend time getting to know him. You kick in on the phone with him, right? You kick in on the phone with her. You spending time to get to know them. That's the same thing you do with your heavenly father. You stop seeing him as this far off deity and you start seeing his Abba. You start seeing him as father. You are my father. You are my father. My father loves me. My father corrects me. My father's not going to withhold anything from me. My father's going to teach me. He's going to show me the way. He's going to protect me. You got to see him as father. So the first thing was repent. Write out the negative thoughts and fears in regards to money. And we're going to replace them with the scripture. We're going to meditate on the scripture. We're going to have declarations. We're going to take the scripture and turn them into declaration. We're going to give thanks. And then during this time, you want to make sure you pray for a strategy. Thank you, Q. You want to make sure you pray for a strategy. God, what should I be doing in this season? God, what, how should I be tackling this debt? God, I'm in some debt. I'm acknowledging that I'm in the debt. I pulled my credit report. God, I'm acknowledging that there's debt here. How do I get out of it? How do we do it? Because sometimes it's not, not always supernatural. It's, thank you, Val. It's not always supernaturally. Sometimes he wants to show you how to do it. Sometimes he wants to show you how to do it. There have been times um, I was like in a financial crisis and the Lord will say, create this, do this course. And then psh, he will blow. He will blow his breath on that course. It would take off and get me the money that I need to 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 start and to build. So ask yourself, what's in my hands? What's in my hands? What are you good at? What what's your what what can you create that somebody else needs? You know how billionaires make money? The people, the most successful people, how they make money, they find a problem to solve. What problem can you solve? Is it, I went through a divorce and now I'm going to teach somebody else how to not go through a divorce. I'm going to teach somebody else how to preserve their marriage. So maybe you're going to write a book. You're going to write a workbook. You keep seeing that, um, that, um, shadow journal book go viral on here. I don't know nothing about the shadow book. I just know people saying it ain't God. But it's going viral on here because it's it, obviously the people in the world think they need this. They think they need that. They think. So what do you what do some what do what problem can you solve? What problem can you solve? And that's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you teach me all things and you bring things to my remembrance. What problem am I meant to solve in this season? What problem am I meant to solve in this season? And you wait and, and let him speak to you. You wait and you spend time with him and you start to get the downloads. I told, I said, was saying the other day, I was in a Shaquat, right? I was in a quiet place and he gave me a chapter in my book. He gave me a bunch of chapters, but I started to actually write one of the chapters in my book. All because what? I sat down. No, I didn't go through a divorce. I've never even been married yet. I was just saying that could be somebody else's testimony. <laughs> no, your girl, I ain't, I ain't even been married yet. I'm just saying that that could be what problem that somebody's solving, right? Right now, I'm solving a problem of telling y'all some strategies. If you're struggling financially, what you're going to do? <laughs> if you're struggling financially, what you're going to do? Maybe for somebody, 
you're meant to be an influencer, right? You're a beauty influencer. So now brands are going to pay you to wear makeup or to wear their clothes. You just have to do the research to figure out how do I tap into this? How do I tap into this? TikTok is a great platform. Um, TikTok is a great platform to get started, y'all. It's a great platform. I remember I was telling preachers and pastors last year, y'all need to jump on TikTok. Y'all need to jump on TikTok. Did a whole course. Some, a lot of them took the course, but they, I don't see half of them on TikTok. But if they would have did it when I said it, if they would have did it when I said it, they could have been further along. Um, it's more than just, uh, this is a place to dance. There's people on here with problems that need to be solved, y'all. People on here that problems that need to be solved. Some of y'all called to be influencers. Brands should be paying you thousands and thousands of dollars, but you haven't started yet. You got to figure out what's the strategy. And don't just jump on something because you hear somebody say it. Sit with the Holy Spirit and ask. I heard Dr. Cindy Trim was saying how there's, she didn't mention the brand name, but she said there is a brand that just pays her $100,000 a year just to wear their clothes on her platform. So if you ever see her dressed up on her Instagram or her Facebook, baby, she's getting paid for that. She's getting a check for that. She's getting a check for that. Everything you are talking about, I'm going through. You see, the Holy Spirit is, is using me to speak to whatever your situation is. Yes, I can give them again. The first one, prayer. So this was a strategy for breaking the spirit of poverty, breaking the spirit of lack. Repent. God forgive me for mismanaging money, mishandling money, for not trusting you. And remember, repentance is not just God, I'm sorry. It's turning away. Now, if I tell God I'm not going to rely on these payday loans no more, I'm not going to rely on these payday loans no more. Some of you, too, if you've subscribed to any of that, you need to break covenant with that. You need to break covenant with these credit card companies. I come out of agreement. I come out of agreement. I come out of alignment with the credit card companies. I come out of alignment with the payday loans, whatever it is. You might need to break covenant with it, especially if you see that your mom used to do that. Your grandma used to do that. It's a history in your family. Break the covenant with it. So the first one was repent. Repent for mismanaging, mishandling, false belief system. Repent for not trusting God. Repent, not honoring God. Repent. Second thing is address your negative thoughts and fears in regards to money. Address your negative thoughts and fears. So get a piece of paper and write out, I say things like I'm broke. Um, I don't believe I, I can be um, successful. I don't believe God wants me to have money. Like whatever it is, write it out. And then we're going to replace that with a scripture. You're going to go find a scripture to, to replace that negative thought. You're going to go find a scripture to replace that negative thought or those negative ways of thinking. You're going to take those scriptures and you're going to meditate on them day and night. You're going to meditate on them day and night. And then you're going to turn those scriptures into declarations. So to turn it, all you have to do is really put I declare or I decree in front of that scripture and just make it make sense to um, to the wording of that scripture. I decree and I declare that wealth and riches are in my house. I decree that and I declare that God is supplying all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I decree and I declare God's word can never return void. God, you said you would supply all of my needs. So I'm expecting you to supply my needs. And then you want to make sure you give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh. Yes, yeah, some of us, we have been in covenant with, we've trusted credit card companies. We made the credit card companies our source. And God is supposed to be the source. The credit card companies, that's just a trap to get us in debt. But we can, that was a resource, right? It shouldn't have been the source. So we give God thanks. And then we pray for a strategy. God, what should I be doing in this season? God, what should I be doing in this season? Is fear, fear of failure a negative thought about money? It can be. If you feel like you, let's say you got a business and you feel like your business is just going to fail. Um, it can be. You pray for a strategy. God, what should I be doing in this season? God, what should I be doing in this season? For a toxic boss. Hmm. I know in Daniel, he went through warfare on the job. In Daniel, I don't remember what chapter, but he went through warfare on the job. They, they, um. They told uh, the king that he didn't bow or he didn't um, worship what they worshipped. He wouldn't bow to um, to their uh, gods or whatever. And that's how he got into the, the lion's den. Um, but I don't know if there's one. There might I don't know if there's one specific to, to, to that way. But maybe go on Google and type in scriptures about toxic environments or something like that. But you know what you can do? Maybe you're called to be on that job to shift the environment. 
We have authority, y'all. When we tap into and realize we have authority, we can go in any atmosphere and change the atmosphere. We have authority. Go, maybe you're supposed to be the light. My uh, friend was telling me when she first met somebody, she first came into the, went to this ministry and she went to this church. You know, sometimes you go in churches and they have these territorial people and they don't want you around any pastors. They think they own the pastors. And this one lady would be mean to her all the time. And the Holy Spirit told her, I want you to go bring her some flowers. I want you to go bring her some flowers. So she went and got her some flowers. She ain't never had a problem with that lady ever since then. It was something that needed to be broken. And the Holy Spirit knew she needed to be valued or appreciated in that moment. She took that them flowers and she ain't never give that lady a hard time. So listen to the Holy Spirit in that. And then address what's in your hands. Remember, I tell you, wealthy people solve problems. What problem can you solve? What problem can you solve? If God has opened the door, you just walk through. A lot of the doors, too. We're standing at some of the doors and they're voice activated, but you haven't said anything. You're standing at the we live in a voice activated world. Some, if you decree a thing, that door is going to open. If the door is open and God told you to walk through it, you just walk through it. If it's God, you want to make sure it's God. If it's him, walk through it. You just walk through it. We need to figure out a strategy of how to get an overflow, an overflow of abundance. If it's just disappearing that quickly, we need to figure out how can we get the overflow? Because it could be the enemy trying to eat it up and you just having just enough. So maybe pray for, for an abundance, pray for more than enough. God, you are a God of, of abundance. You, you are the God of overflow. Thank you guys for the gifts. You are the God of overflow. How much battery life do we Got a little bit more time before I have to get off, but I just wanted to come on and give that because I keep getting it. I can't respond to every inbox. I can't respond to every email. So I just try to make these videos and then put them on YouTube so you can go back and listen to them over and over and over again and take what you need, eat the meat, spit out the bones. If you be like, hey, she ain't somebody for me, then I ain't somebody for you. Let me give you a couple of decrees. Let me give you this prayer and then I'll give you a couple of decrees. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke any attack of the enemy on my finances. I declare that you are my provider and my protector. I trust in your abundant provision. Shield me from any schemes or attacks that hinder, that seek to hinder my financial breakthrough. May your angels encamp around me, guarding and preserving my financial well-being. I stand firm in your promises and resist every form of financial oppression or lack. Thank you for your love and your protection. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Somebody, this is your homework assignment. Go write a prayer. You take some of those scriptures that you find and turn them into a prayer. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no right or wrong way. This is between you and God. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any attack of the enemy on my finances. You can start that. But go write a prayer, something you can meditate on. The, the, when you pray the scriptures... There's like an acceleration when you pray the scripture. I remember one time I was believing God, I think for, for my rent to be paid and I didn't know how it was going to come. And I got in the secret place and I started to pray the scriptures. When I came, I spent 30 minutes just praying the scriptures. God, you said you supply all of my need according to your riches and glory. God, you said if I gave it, be given unto me, give measure, press down, shaking together, running over. I did that for 30 minutes. I came out of prayer and then like 30 minutes later, I looked at my phone. And it said Zell for the amount of money that I needed. And then in the, you know how they can put like a note? It said for your rent. And I said, God, did you go telling somebody my business? For your rent. It says real women worship the Lord unashamed. Um, and the company that, that gave this to me, they changed their name, but they don't sell this hoodie no more. Because somebody asked me the other day about it. And I went to do some research. They changed their name. Um, but they don't they don't sell this anymore. At least I didn't see it on their site. Hello. All right. So somebody go write your prayer out. You get you a scripture and turn it into a prayer. Get you a scripture and turn it into a prayer. All right. And I'll give you a couple of declarations that I have. Um, I decree that I am blessed and a prosperous child of God. I walk in the favor of the Lord and he opens doors of financial abundance before me. That's based off of Deuteronomy 28 and 8. That's a scripture. Somebody write that down. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Go read that. I decree that I am a faithful tither. And as I bring my tithes into the storehouse, 
God pours out blessings upon me and rebukes the devourer for my namesake. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. That's based off of that one. I decree that God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I trust in his provision and I have no lack in any area of my life. That's based off of Philippians 4, 19. Philippians 4, 19. I decree that I am a wise steward of, of my finances. I manage my resources with integrity, wisdom, and generosity, and I experience an increase in all that I set my hands to do. That's based off of Luke 16 and 10. Luke 16 and 10. Integrity is very important. If God can't trust you in the minor, he's not going to trust you in the major. Um, I remember there was this lady I was talking to. Um, who owed me some money. And um, she she acknowledged it. She said, yeah, I know I owe you money. She said, just like I owe them credit card companies from six years ago. And I said, and we was in church when she said it. <laughs> and I said, look at her. Look at the devil admitting that he got what, it, what was supposed to be mine. <laughs> but I'm saying that for integrity, y'all. Integrity. You know you owe somebody money. It's one thing if you can't give it to them. But you, she I see her in Gucci. I see her in this and I see her in that. So I I know if she really wanted to give me the money, she could. And at this point, God supplies so we can chuck it. But just the fact, the audacity, that's how the enemy do, y'all. The audacity to tell to tell you, I got I got your money. I got your money. Uh anyway, uh the last decree. I decree that God has given me the power to create wealth. I walk in his divine wisdom and strategies and I prosper in all my endeavors endeavors. And that's based off of Deuteronomy 818. Deuteronomy 818. You also want to make sure, guys, there's no offense in the area of well, there should be no offense at all, but no offense in the area of money. No offense in the area of money. Here, here, let me tell you a story. So last year when I was doing consulting for pastors and preachers, I took on these clients, right? We had an agreement. That they would pay me a certain amount every month, right? And I was helping them build up their social media, helping them build up their following. And so they got to a place where they decided they wasn't going to pay Quanda Renee no more. Um, and so with me, I don't play games when it comes to money. I just break covenant with you, break ties with you. You go your way, you go mine. But I also found myself offended. And so um, I noticed, I noticed that my money wasn't flowing like it should. So I said to God, I'm like, what's up? You know, money's a currency. You know, the currency wasn't currenting, if that's even a thing. The money wasn't flowing, right? And so I'm like, God, what's up? He said, you're offended. He said, you're offended. When you're offended, my hand can't move. So what I had to do, forgive her, forgive them, and let the offense go. I move on with my life. And he even had me to, to send them a message saying, I repent for being offended at you. Now, mind you. They, in the natural, you look at it, they did me wrong, but God wanted to make sure my hands was clean and my heart was pure. He was teaching me. He was teaching me a lesson in that. As soon as I let that go, that current came back. So it could be too, if you find yourself stagnant, if you find yourself stagnant in an area of your life, make sure to check and see if you're not offended because the offense will stop the flow. The offense will stop the hand of God. If you're offended at somebody and you got some health issues, you need to go back and look and say, hey, is this worth it? Is this $2,000, $3,000 worth me being offended when I know God can do a million times over that? A million times over that. A million times over that. So that's just something I want to share with y'all. That can literally stop. That can literally stop the, the, the hand and the flow of God when you're offended. Um, does that validate what they did? Absolutely not. But the Lord wants you to be whole, you to be healed. I can't get on here to teach y'all about offense if I'm offended. Right. I got to be I got to be an example to show y'all that, yes, I'm human. I was offended. Right. I was offended back in the day. I might have smacked them or something. Right. But then I had to realize God can do more than that. My trust is in the father. My trust is in God. It's not in man. God is my source. They got to answer to God for that. God is my source. They got to answer to God for that. Not me. Not me. I clean my clean my hands. I let them go. I broke that off. They violated the agreement. And it shows about her character when she said, yes, I know I owe you money. And I know I owe my credit card company from six years ago. But I'm still walking around here in my Gucci and my Prada. <laughs> That's her integrity, not mine. 
her integrity, not mine. All right. Does anybody need me to repeat? I see y'all joining the challenge. I see a lot of people joining the challenge. I get the notifications. We are on a 21 day intimacy with God challenge, even though I didn't really get on here to talk about that. But it's 21 days of seeking God, spending time in his presence, building up that relationship, right? You get the secrets, you get the downloads, you get the strategies when you sit with God, when you listen to him, when you read his word, when you give him praise, when you worship him, y'all, we got to stop accessing God through everybody else when we can get it, we can get it. Instead of watching all these YouTube videos of how to become a success, ask the Holy Spirit because that is your secret to success. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Holy Spirit teaches me all things and brings things to my remembrance. If I have the Holy Spirit who knows all things, why can't he give me a strategy? You don't have to be out here copying what everybody else is doing, following what everybody else is doing. Get you a strategy for you and that how you navigate. You don't, you, Mac, you, um, idolizing somebody else's life and you don't know what they've been through or you idolizing somebody else's blessings but you don't know the price that they paid i want to walk in quanda renee's shoes only not nobody else you could start back over if you messed up or you stopped you can start over you're talking about the challenge you can either start over or just come back in the race i'm not kicking anybody out god ain't kicking nobody out this is your personal relationship with god we got to keep it going we got to keep it going that's why I'm doing the 21 day challenge to get intimate with God and find my purpose. Hold on, since you said purpose, I see in my notes, I see in my notes, I always say your purpose will leave clues. Your purpose will leave clues. I want you to meditate on Jeremiah. 20. Sorry, y'all, we gotta make this quick. It's about to die. Je I want you to meditate, whoever just said that. Was that, um, was that Mizzy? Mizzy. I want you to take write the scripture down. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I want you to meditate on that. And then I want you to write these questions. If you're struggling, if anybody on here is struggling with their, with their purpose, write these down. I want you to ask yourself and sit before God. I want you to ask yourself, what are you good at? What am I good at? What am I good at? I want you to write that. Sit with the Holy Spirit and sit that and write this stuff down. What am I good at? What are you good at? What comes natural to me or what comes natural to you? What do you do without effort? What do you do without effort? And I'll repeat them again. What do people compliment you on? People compliment me on knowing how to go viral, on knowing marketing. So I know that I'm supposed to be doing something in that realm, right? People call on me when they're trying to figure out how to grow on TikTok or how to grow on Facebook, Instagram. Like, that's what I'm known for. I've been known for that for the last six years, right? What burdens you? Here's This is a key. What burdens you? We think about um, Nehemiah. He had a burden for the wall to rebuild the wall of uh jerusalem was it jerusalem or jericho what? no jerusalem <laughs> he had a burden to rebuild the wall right and so that was a part of his purpose for that time what would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it what would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it? if you couldn't get a check for something what would you do because uh, i don't think this printed out all the way all right so let me repeat those again let me repeat those again. What are you good at? What are you good at? What are you good at? What comes natural to you? What comes natural to you? What do you do without effort? Thank you for the heart, uh, the flowers or the roses. Thank you for the roses. What, what do you do without effort? What do people compliment you on? What do people compliment you on? Thank you for scribing, y'all. You're so good at that. What burdens you? What burdens you? What if only the church taught this? There's a lot, but you know what? Let me not get off on a tangent. Let me finish. What would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it? What would you do if you even if you couldn't get paid for it? I feel like we're in a season where God is getting ready to shake some things up. Um, I think we're going to see teachers on the forefront because we need to be taught. For some reason in the body of Christ, they make it seem like teachers aren't an asset to the body. To the body, Teachers are necessary. Teachers are necessary because obviously people don't know the word. People are not reading. People are saying they don't hear from God because it's not being taught. What's being taught is this. 
Your breakthrough is on the way. That's being taught. And that's the only thing being taught. We need more than that. We need the word. We need the word. Okay, do y'all need me to repeat those again? Yeah, major shift. Absolutely. I believe it. It's going to be speedily. 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 <laughs> do y'all need me to repeat those again? Okay, so this was for purpose. The scripture we talked about is Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Make sure y'all take that scripture with y'all. Meditate on that today. And when you sit before God, you can say, you can ask him, God, what is my purpose? Why did you create me? What should I be doing in this current season of my life? Thank you for the gifts. What is my purpose? Why did you create me? What should I be doing in this current season of my life? And this is your heavenly father. So you have, there's nothing wrong with asking these questions. You want to know why you're here. Because sometimes in different seasons, we're doing different things. In this season, I'm doing something different. I'm not really helping people with, with social media. I'm showing up for y'all in this season. In this season. Well, forgiveness starts with a decision, right? It starts with a decision. I'm making a decision that I'm no longer going to stay hostage or chained to what somebody did and didn't do. When you stay in unforgiveness, that's another thing that stops the flow. That's another thing that stops the hand of God. We read, oh man, I don't even have my Bible with me. Um, was that Mark eleven twenty four? 24 we read? When you pray, believe, you receive, and then it talked about forgiveness. I think it was Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Maybe go read Mark eleven twenty four. 24. That talks about, you know, when you pray, how God forgives us. So if we want to be forgiven, we got to forgive other people. You got to make a decision. Like I'm not saying, let's say you got raped, molested. I'm not excusing any of that, right? I'm not excusing any of that. But for you, you don't want to be chained. You don't want to be bound to what did or didn't happen and stay there. Because you stay in that place, that person that moved on and that person in the grave, you staying in that place, you keeping yourself stuck. You can't live in the past and now at the same time. It's impossible. It's impossible. So it starts with a decision and then you forgive by faith. Thank you, Amorain. You forgive by faith, right? Forgive by faith. And sometimes you might have to keep going at it and say, okay, I forgave Jane yesterday, but today I done seen her on Instagram and I seen her flaunting my baby daddy. Lord, help me. Help me. I learned how to forgive when I was going through betrayal. Uh, the Lord had me on a 21 day praying for my enemies. Now they on social media popping off, right? They on social media popping off. And the Lord is like, you can't respond. You can't say nothing back. But what I'm going to have you do is pray for them. Everybody says, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. But can you pray for the ones that's praying against you? Right? You got to make a decision. And during that 21 days, he was showing me how to pray for people that were doing me wrong. And you know what happened after that 21 days? I got back on social media and they still were talking junk. So I had to guard my heart. So I wouldn't have to repeat that 21 days. Right? It starts with a decision, y'all. It, it, it's, it's hard without God. With God, it's not that hard because he'll, he'll, he'll show you. He'll help you. You give it to him. You give it. You keep going back to him and give it to him. You get, I'm, I'm careful about saying things are hard or even challenging. I'm careful about stuff like that. I monitor my, my speech because if you believe something is hard, it's going to be hard. So I, I've definitely, um, that's just me though. I, I've tried to monitor stuff like that. You know, I try to, I don't talk about being in a struggle or, or, in, I, you know, I, I monitor things like that. So I don't, you know, be in that type of stuff. Does anybody need me to repeat? I know I got off. Y'all need me to repeat the purpose ones or the, um, the thing we were talking about earlier with the finances. It's doable with God, with only with God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, nurse. My best friend is a nurse, too. I got a love for the nurses. Okay, the purpose one. Okay. So when you sit with God, it's okay to ask, God, what is my purpose? Why did you create me? I'll do the finance one after this. Okay. Okay. What should I be doing in this current season of my life? What should I be doing in this current season of my life? What should I be doing in this current season of my life? And you can go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Mizzy, that's one you're going to be meditating on. You're going to read that one, Mizzy, throughout the rest of this challenge. Um, and then ask yourself, what are you good at? What are you good at? Yes, I'll repeat. What are you good at? What comes natural to you? What comes natural to you? 
What do you do without effort? What do you do without effort? What do people compliment you on? What do people compliment you on? What burdens you? You see something online, you be like, man, there's no good um, books about marriage out here. And you've got a successful marriage. Maybe you are supposed to write the next marriage book. Seek God first, though. What would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it? What would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it? Thank you to the mods. Y'all could pin some of those, too, um, so they can um, see them. What would you do if you couldn't get paid, even if you couldn't get paid for it? What would you do even if you couldn't get paid for it? So for me, I love strategy. I love marketing and things like that, right? I love, I'm analytical. Um, and that's just how the Lord deals with me, like through, through the creative side of, of analytics and building out stuff, right? So I would do stuff like that even if I couldn't get paid for it. You're welcome, Izzy. We got you. We got you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 for purpose. Volunteering. That's a good one. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. All right, let's go back to the finances part of it. Let's go back to the finances. The person that was asking about the relationship, you need to come on the 21 day intimacy with God challenge. It's a 21 day challenge where we pick a place in our house or wherever where we can meet God every day. Every day. And at the same time, if possible, during those times, you're going to be reading, you're going to be praying, you're going to be worshiping. However, the spirit is leading you. It's all about building that intimacy with God. Spending time with him. So you get to know him. You get to learn him. Know in the Hebrew, yada means to be, to know intimately. Not know of, not I know of that he did this for my grandmother. No, I know what he did for me. That's yada in the Hebrew. 21 days and to sign up for that challenge, you go to my link in bio. We are on day 10, getting ready to go into day 11. Some of the people in the other countries are already in day 11. America here, we're, we're wrapping up day 10 here. Tomorrow will be day 11. Join that challenge. It's about building your relationship with the father, knowing him as father and not just this off deity or this off big creator. No, you're my dad. You're my dad. <laughs> All right, let's go to the, um, the, the strategy for breaking the spirit of poverty. First thing we got to do, number one, pr is repent. If you know your purpose, that's cool too. So you ask God, what should I be doing with it? If you need insight on what I should be doing with it, then you ask him, God, I know that you called me to be a speaker. So how am I, what am I, what should I be doing in this season? Is this season where I'm building a TikTok up? Is this season where I'm building a TikTok up to get that practice, to get this? Um, I remember when I was first coming out, everybody was like, oh, you should do um, public speaking. I ain't never do public speaking a day in my life. The Holy Spirit, I used to come on here real ghetto, but I had a word in me when I used to do Facebook. The Holy Spirit worked on me um, and, and, and help me with, with learning different words and coming on here and being a little bit, sometimes, sometimes I don't, y'all know, I don't be coming on here all dressed up and stuff like that. I come as I am. If I'm around my house and the Lord give me a burden to give y'all word, I'm not going to put on no makeup to give it to y'all. There's times I make videos. It's two or three o'clock in the morning. You think I'm going to pick up, put on makeup two or three o'clock in the morning? No. Well, just me. No, I come, I, and you use this as a, Facebook was my training grant, my training camp or training ground. When I used to go live on Facebook back in 2019, I would have 6,000 people watching me, six to 7,000 people watching me. Now, back then I was just learning, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was navigating through being platformed. I was navigating through betrayal. I was navigating through all of that stuff and I was navigating through it publicly showing everybody, okay, this is what I bit, went through with betrayal. So let me share this with you. And that's how the Lord grew me. Then I started doing Bible trivia and, and having fun with that. And that's how the Lord like used me to, to grow and to learn. Okay. Back to this. Y'all know I'll be getting off. Repent was number one. Number two, negative thoughts and fears, addressing those negative thoughts and fears, addressing those negative thoughts and fears. Addressing those negative thoughts and fears was number two, right? Um, and then we're going to replace those negative thoughts and fears with the scripture. We're going to face those, replace those negative thoughts and fears with the scriptures, right? And then we're going to find, we're going to take those scriptures and start to meditate on them day and night. We're going to take those scriptures and start to meditate on them day and night. 
Then we're going to turn those scriptures into declarations. We're going to turn those scriptures into declarations. It's simple. You can just put, I declare, I decree in the front of them. I declare and I decree in the front of them. Hey, uh, Johannesburg. And then we want to make sure we are have a posture of thanksgiving or a posture of, of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord, for being my protector. Thank you, Lord, for being my friend, whatever it is. And then you're going to ask and pray for a strategy. You're going to pray for a strategy. You're going to pray for a strategy. Lord, how do I do this? What should I be doing in this season? How do I navigate through this debt wherever you are? And you can use this for any other area in your life as well. It just just finances is the one y'all keep asking me about. And then assess what's in your hands. What is in your hands? Remember that lady uh was it the was it the widow woman? And she's just like, I just got I just got a little thing of oil. And that was all that she needed. I just I got a little bit of education on how to start a YouTube channel. That's all that you need. Now you go and teach other people how to build a YouTube channel. Whatever you're called to do, assess within your hands. Some of y'all, y'all written things already, right? Y'all got strategies y'all could give people already, right? And just figure out what you got to do with it. You just ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Some of y'all, there's books. Some of y'all meant to write scripts. Once this, um, this, uh, what do they call it? A strike is over. You continue to write your scripts, right? You got scripts. You got, you got, some of you got the cure. Somebody might have the cure for cancer on here. I don't know. Whatever's in your hands. Somebody might have a strategy for the government. Um, I think um, it was one woman of God that was, she was talking about how she's she's a preacher, right? But behind the scenes, what people don't know is she's a whole strategist for governments. She helps governments build strategy. So she don't ever have to rely on the church for any type of money because the governments, different governments from different countries are paying her a lot of money, right? So... The Lord might send you into an arena that has absolutely nothing to do with church world. He might send you to um, healthcare. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out of there. I love to write. So that could be a part of what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're going to help other people write books, right? Maybe you're going to help people edit. Maybe you're going to write poems. I don't know. Like, just sit with that. Sit with that and ask God. Cooking, maybe you're saying, I heard Miles Monroe tell this story and I love it. He told the story of how this woman had got fired from, I think she was working at a hotel and she came to him crying. And then he said, basically, what, what's in your hands? Like, what's something you love to do? She was like, I can bake. He said, okay, now I want you to go bake some cookies and go back to that hotel. She went, baked them cookies and she didn't understand why he's telling her to go back to the hotel. She went and gave everybody, gave out the cookies Next thing you know, she had orders for cookies. Next thing you know, she was making millions of dollars from selling cookies because she assessed what's in her hands. She got laid, fired from that job or let go, but she built a bakery. Y'all can't tell me that ain't God. She built a bakery. It was already within her. She just needed somebody to pull it out of her. She went to the man of God crying, what should I do? What should I do? He asked her, what's in your hands? Thank you for the roses. I love decorating. Okay, maybe you're supposed to help people clean up the house. You know that pe some people do not like cleaning up their house. Or maybe you're supposed to decorate these, these um, you know, those the realtors, how they have these nice videos on social media. Maybe you're supposed to decorate stuff like that. Like, just think about stuff like that. Just think about stuff like that. Writing, you could be a writer. You can teach other people how to write. You could teach courses on how to write. You know what I mean? You could write books. I'm telling you, the people that make money in this world are problem sol solvers. Stage houses, yeah, that's it. Problem solvers. You find a problem to solve, you can make money. You can make money. You find a problem to solve, and you can make money. And you can use these channels to build an audience. You use these platforms to build in these audience. These these <laughs> these platforms are you using us. Why not? Why not use them? <laughs> They're using us. They're, they they bought they've gotten our attention. Which steps the purpose ones or the uh, financial ones? Purpose or financial? Purpose or financial ones? It's already in you, y'all. It's already in you. Holy Spirit is just gonna draw it out of you. 
When you sit still and be quiet, you're going to be like, man, like I could have been doing this years ago. Man, if I knew what I knew now, shoot, I would never been on my parents' couch. But I guess I had to go through that just to, to, to come on the other side. <sighs> okay, so we'll start with the purpose one. So I want you to sit with God and ask God, what is my purpose? Why did you create me? What should I be doing in this current season? What is my purpose? Why did you create me? What should I be doing in, in this current season of my purpose? See, if I read the comments, I'll be getting off, y'all. What are you stuck on, Mama Bear? Maybe you're supposed to be making meals. You know, sometimes it starts small beginnings. That lady was just baking out of her thing, her, her own oven in her kitchen, right? And then she expanded and had to get a conventional thing. So maybe right now you do a food truck. Maybe right now you're just selling dinners or plates. You know, you start where you are. What is my purpose? Why did you create me? What should I be doing in this current season of my life? What should I be doing? Thank you for sharing. What should I be doing in this current season of my life? And then the scripture you can meditate on is Jeremiah 29 and 11. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. Good evening. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Thank you for the heart, me. I appreciate it. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. See, good thing Mizzy said this. Because then we, we wouldn't even been here. Okay, so now questions to ask yourself. What are you good at? What are you good at? What comes natural to you? What comes, thank you, for, um, Casey, for scribing. What comes natural to you? What comes natural to you? What do you do without effort? What do you do without effort? If the Lord is pressing you to do a fast, do a fast. Do it immediately. Do it immediately. That's how I got my breakthrough when I was on my parents' couch. Broke, busted, disgusted. No money. Trying to figure it out. Three degrees and nobody was hiring me. I went on the fast and the Lord, I heard the Lord. Clear as day. Fasting helps you uh, hear better. There's a greater level of sensitivity. The other day I went in, a, in one of them stores in the mall. And normally I can go in there and, and just ignore what they got, all that they got going on. You know how they play the loud music. But I noticed since I've been on this fast, I couldn't stay in there but so long because the noise was annoying to me. The music was annoying to me. Them in there cursing was annoying to me. It creates a greater level of sensitivity. What do people compliment you on? What do people compliment you on? What burdens you? What do people compliment you on? What burdens you? What burdens you and what would you do even if you couldn't you couldn't um, get paid to do it? What would you do even if you couldn't get paid to do it? What would you do even if you couldn't get paid to do it? Yeah, Lord. I mean, y'all, if you feel like the Lord is calling you to do something, you want to make sure you're in obedience. That's that's what, how Abraham became a friend of God because he obeyed him because even delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Okay, so that's the um, that's the purpose one. And after this, y'all, I'm going to have to get off because the battery is going even lower. So we'll repeat the breaking the spirit of poverty, breaking the spirit of lack. First thing you want to do is repent. First thing you want to do is repent. Right? God, forgive me for mismanaging money, for not trusting you, for not honoring you with money, whatever it is. You want to repent for false belief systems in regards to money. God will never do it for me. You repent for stuff like that. Second thing you want to do is you want to identify or address the negative thoughts and the fears you have in regards to money. You want to identify the negative thoughts and the fears um, in regards to money. And then you want to replace it with a scripture. You want to go find some scriptures about those negative thoughts. So if my negative thought was always, I'm always in fear. I would go find, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. And then I would say to myself, that power, love, and a sound mind, overthrow that fear, right? So you want to get those scriptures, and then you're going to meditate on those scriptures day and night, over and over and over and over and over, meditate on them. And then you want to turn those scriptures into declarations. Thank you for the follows. Turn those scriptures into declarations. So I would say something like, I decree and I declare 
that God did not give me the spirit of fear, but he gave me power, love and a sound mind. I would say something like that. And then you want to make sure your your heart is in a posture of thanksgiving. God, thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for keeping me. Whatever it is, you want to just make sure you give God thanks. Do I have water? I have some tea. And then you want to pray for a strategy. Pray for a strategy. God, what should I be doing in this season? How should I be? Um, how do I get out of this if you're in debt, how do I get out of financial debt? How do I increase my revenue? And some of you, you're going to get promotions on your job, too. Somebody just told me the other day they did the um, the 21 day financial breakthrough challenge. They said they got a promotion on their job, making more money than they've ever made in their entire life. Than their entire life. In their entire life. We thank God for that. And then you want to assess what's in your hands. What's in your hands? Yeah, I will post this on YouTube later. Just give me some time because some, for some reason, TikTok has been like real funny with um, me downloading them. I did put, um, I did two lives earlier. I did one on Instagram and then one on here to talk about day 10. And I put those on YouTube already. Those are on YouTube already. So I'll try to get this one up tonight. Try to get this one. Yep, what is in your hands? That's okay, Beverly. I'm, I, I'm random today. I just... Came on because I was getting a, a bunch of um, emails and, and messages that I can't go through all of them. But most of them are about financial breakthrough. So that's what we talked about. Financial breakthrough. And then we talked about purpose. Thanks to Mizzy. We got into purpose today, too. Thank you for the roses. Hey, Rachel. Y'all, if you need an extra resource for financial breakthrough, check out the journal in my bio. It's called Financial Breakthrough Journal. It's a tw financial breakthrough. It's a 21-day fasting and prayer journal. It has prayers, it has the scriptures, it has a place where you can do gratitude. It walks you through a 21-day fast. It has declarations. Like, it has a bunch of stuff. Um, and that's just an extra resource if you need it. If not, just go on Google and type in scriptures for finances and do with the tools that I taught you. Thank you, first gifter. Thank you, appreciate that. We just, all we need to know is the word. Take the word and work it. The word will work if you work it. The word will work if you work it. But you can't quit. You can't throw in the towel. You know what I mean? Some of us, we're uprooting stuff that's been there for 30, 40, 50 years. So we, we take the scripture to just keep uprooting that. And you got to stick with it. You got to stick with it. Thank you guys for the likes. I think that's the most likes I've ever had. Thank you for that. You got to stick with it, y'all. You stick with it. You keep working the word. You keep, And eventually, the spirit of lack, the spirit of poverty is going to be like, whoa, I can't dwell up in here. Too much word up in here. I can't dwell up in here. Too much word up in here. Yeah, my YouTube channel, if you go to my bio and click that Instagram um, icon, it shows you my Instagram and my YouTube. They combined it. So you can do that or you can just search. I need a word. It's the one that has like 6,000 followers. The word will work if you work it. The word will work if you work it, y'all. I'm telling you that I come out of every situation I've ever been through <laughs> with the word. And now, mind you. Before I before I really, really knew God and had a relationship with God, I was I was reading a bunch of books, bunch of and a lot of the a bunch of strategies from different. Um, um, I think some of that stuff was new age, too. I was reading a bunch of that different stuff. It had me all over the place. They took a lot of what the Bible was saying and twisted them and twisted the script, and twisted the scriptures. And I went the Lord put me back to the scriptures. And that's when I started to see a breakthrough in my life. I remember I got well off. I was reading. I was going to the library and I've read like probably over a hundred something books that year. And um, one of the last books I was reading, because I was following somebody I thought was a Christian influencer on social media because she would talk about Holy Spirit. So I thought she was all right, but she was into some stuff, right? She was into some stuff. That's why you got to pray about everybody you're listening to. Pray about me, y'all. Bring me to the throne, okay? You got to have that discerning spirit. But I was listening to her. And then she would be talking about, you know, manifesting and different things like that. She'd be talking like, so, but one of the last books I read, I can't even remember the title, but in the book, the man said, God does not desire your worship. And when I read that, I felt sick to my stomach. I felt sick to my stomach. And that's what pushed me back to the Bible. That's what pushed me back to the word. I was well off. Because I was chasing success. I wanted to be successful. All my pastor was doing in church on Sunday was talking about my breakthrough was on the way. And I'm like, well, when is it going to come? What do I got to get do to get this breakthrough? He, You know what I mean? He did the best that he could do, but he wasn't helping me. I wasn't 
entrepreneur. I'm trying to navigate through life. Sometimes when you grow up in those on those um, those old school churches, they don't understand entrepreneurs. My grandmother still tells people I don't have a job. She doesn't understand entrepreneurship. <laughs> you know, like that old school thinking. But when I told you I read that, I got sick to my stomach and I repented. I'm like, God, I'm sorry. I'm well. I was way over there. I was seeking something outside of you because I wasn't getting it. And that's what happens a lot of times. When you're not getting something in your local base, you start to seek. You start to inquire. And you have to be very careful with that. You want to be. That's why it's important to have a relationship with Holy Spirit, relationship with God. You want to make sure you, you stay grounded in the word. And so got back to the word and I started taking the word and working it. I started taking the way and I started following um, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, who I love, love, love. And she would talk about different things, supernatural things and the Lord doing this. And I think she might have been the one that said to write all them scriptures down and meditate them. So I got a notebook or I got a, a journal and every financial scripture I could find. I wrote it out with my bare hands. I didn't print it. I wrote it out with my bare hands. I wish I still had it to this day. But I wrote every financial scripture I could find. Every financial scripture I could find. Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, she's really into the supernatural. Like if you're if you're not into supernatural, she's not somebody to follow. You, follow, but she's really into the supernatural. She always brings you back to the Word of God, though. The Word of God. She's taught me so much, um, and she's an amazing, per, uh, amazing apostle, amazing person, amazing person. Take the Word and work it. Yes, y'all. Take the Word and work it. Take the Word and work it. All right, I think we're going to wrap up because this battery is dying. I repeated everything. We're going to try to have this on YouTube tonight. Um, prayerfully, they'll let me download it. I did up, was able to upload the ones from earlier today. Um, make sure, who, what did I tell y'all? To write a prayer. Your homework assignment is to write a prayer. Write a prayer out in regards to your finances. Write a prayer in regards to your finances. And um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's between you and God. You just... Whatever it is you're believing him for, whatever he, I got my financial breakthrough book. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, y'all, I'm telling you, all it is, is just, it just made, it just made, makes it easier for somebody who doesn't want to go search on Google, who doesn't want to, you know, sit and do all of that. This has just made it easy for you. It teaches you, you recommends different fasts, gives you prayers, it gives you um, financial declarations, and it walks you through the 21 days of what your prayer should be, so just a resource all right y'all thank y'all so much the link to your youtube um if you go to my bio my profile and click that the instagram icon it'll bring up youtube and instagram just click youtube or you can just go on youtube and search i need a word and it's the one with the six thousand followers it's the one with the six thousand followers uh, scriptures you wrote down in the financial book too there's other scriptures in here there's more scriptures in here like the decorations and stuff and then there's old testament new testament this one's a little bit more in depth this but all the um decorations are based off the word yeah dr sharon nesbitt was um who i was referring to <sighs> she's a great woman of god she might be on um she might be on tiktok she might be on tiktok i know for sure she's on facebook she's on youtube and um Instagram, I know for certain, for certain. <laughs> Maybe the Lord redirected you. I don't know, A. Marie. I don't know, but I'm getting ready to get off. We were just talking about how to break the spirit of poverty with the word of God. And even if you're somebody too who's struggling in a different area, you can take those same tips and strategies. It's just a matter of getting the word. It's just a matter of getting the word. Declarations. You want me to repeat those declarations I said before? Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Is that what you want me to do? Sure. I got to get off. I'm feeling a little dizzy. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. What, Casey? What were you saying about the declarations? What do you What do you need before I jump? Before this phone dies. Before this phone dies. Yeah, she's on okay, she is on TikTok. Good. She's uh she's she gives you the word and that's it. She gives you the word and that's it. I have a bunch of her books too. Really, really good. It's just the word. She has a book on let me see if I can find it. It's on divine help. Um Yeah. See, Tony, Seeds for Divine Health. And this is Daily Decrees 
for your health. She does have this. This is really good. So if you're going through some some healing, I've seen a lot of people get healed under her ministry too. Like she does, she definitely has that gift. Okay. Uh, I decree that I am blessed and a prosperous child of God. I walk in the favor of the Lord and he opens doors of financial abundance for me. That's based off of Deuteronomy 28 and 8. So just go to Deuteronomy 28 and 8 and create a declaration. Just go to Deuteronomy 28 and 8 and create your declaration. All it is is putting I decree or I declare before before um, the scripture. And then you can add to it if you want to. I decree that I am a faithful tither. And as I bring my tithes into the storehouse, God pours out blessings upon me and rebukes the devourer for my sake. That's based off of Malachi 3, 10 through 11. You too, Julia. Thank you for joining. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. I decree that God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I trust in his provision and I have no lack in any area of my life. That's based off of Philippians 4.19. That's based off of Philippians 4.19. Thank you for scribing Philippians 4.19. The first one was Deuteronomy 28.8. Deuteronomy 28.8. Second one was Malachi 3.10 and 11 through 11. And then Philippians 4.19. I decree that I'm a wise steward of my finances. I manage my resources with integrity, wisdom, and generosity, I experience, experience an increase in all that I set my hands to. That's in Luke 16.10. Luke 16.10. Yes. Thank you, nurse. Luke 16.10. I decree that God has given me the power to create. I walk in his divine wisdom and strategies and I prosper in all my endeavors. That's based off of Deuteronomy 8.18. Deuteronomy 8.18. And some of y'all too. You got to check yourself about mismanaging money. If you going out here buying red bottoms and you know your rent is due, you the reason for your financial issue. So you got to check yourself too. God, I got a habit of spending. Lord, I be on Amazon all day. You be honest with him. Help me, God. I got an Amazon addiction. You got to be real with yourself, right? If God can't trust you in the small, he can't trust you in the big. Some of you, you, everybody's decreeing and declaring they're being millionaires. Some of you won't give anybody a dollar with the $10 that you got now. But you want God to bless you with more. You got to be faithful over few and he'll make you ruler over many. Faithful over few, he'll make you ruler over many. I remember, and this is just something I did. I, I, I'm, I've been a tither since I was young, right? When I learned that principle, because it's a spiritual law that you reap what you sow. I took that unbeliever's... I saw millionaires and billionaires who didn't believe in God, but they always sold 10% to charity. So I figured they stole that from us, right? So I was in a season where I didn't have anything. Like I was broke, busted, and disgusted, right? And um, I was in debt with these credit card companies, right? And um, I would call the credit card company and I would say, only thing I could put on this bill is $50. I would go out and door dash and get that $50. Only thing I can put on this bill is $50. They'll be like, ma'am, we're not taking your money. That fifty dollars is not enough. So I say, okay, you sure, ma'am? We can't take fifty dollars. I'll go take that fifty dollars and I'll go sew it. I know I was crazy back then, but it worked. It taught me a principle of I reap what I sow, and the Lord would make good of that. He saw where I was at, and I was trying where I was at. Y'all wasn't gonna take my money. Then let me sew it. Let me sew it. At the moment, am kind, not mean. Well, you got to trust God. You got to trust God. I don't know your financial situation. I don't even know what you believe, but you got to trust God. I've seen people who don't have no jobs and they God make ways. They take the word and they work it. Exactly. He knows about you and your situation. There's nothing that surprises God. There's nothing that surprises God. No people on disability thriving. Like... Trust God and then ask him what's in your hands. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something that you can sell to get that money, right? Maybe there's something in your house that you're not using that would be a benefit to somebody else. <laughs> I ain't all here talking to you about no Beyonce concert. That's on you. And I know you trolling me. You go ahead. The same ones that go to that uh, conference be needing to come on Sunday mornings for deliverance. You go right ahead.
If that's what something, if that's what you want to do. I know you're trolling me though. I saw your health and wealth message. Thanks. I'm not sure which one that is, but you're welcome. Exactly. Create it with a purpose. My husband and I had no job in a new state. The church gave my husband a job at the church. Look at God. You see, there's always a plan. When you follow him and you obey, there's a blessing on the other side of obedience, y'all. There's a blessing on the other side of obedience. There is a blessing on the other side. You may not see it in the moment. You may feel like you being humiliated. You may feel like you being crazy. Like even with the hacking and me losing all of that, like for a second, I was like, man, God, like, what do I have? But he's like, what's in your hands? Now I'm going to set you on TikTok to, te to teach my people how to come out. But that's been a prophetic word over my life anyway, too, that I would help women come out of, um, come out of, uh, I don't know the word, come out of dark places, I guess. And he will do it. He will do it. Take some of those strategies that I mentioned in this video and work the word and work the word. Work the word. You're welcome, Zambia. God bless you. You know, Africa is getting ready to rise up in power. Africa is getting ready to be a superpower. I've been saying for years, when I used to go live on Facebook, I would say this. And I don't know why I was saying it. The Lord was leading me to say it. I would say, God loves Africa. Don't y'all forget it. You are not forgotten. Now I understand why. Y'all getting ready to rise up. Thank you, Andrea. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I just want... I know what it took for me to get free out of certain areas, so I just want to help other people. I want to help other people. And I also know that a lot of times we're going to churches and stuff and they're not teaching some of this stuff. Um, and it could be maybe the Lord's not telling them to teach it. I don't know. But I know for me, I need to be taught. Like, I'm over the hooping and hollering phase. Maybe there's a time for that, I guess. I'm over that. I want to be taught. Teach me how to navigate in these last days. Teach me how to be prepared for spiritual warfare. Teach me how to fight against the enemy. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to read my word. Teach me how to fall in love with God. Like teach me those things. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So, I mean, that's what I desire so that I'm trying to help other people um, do this. When I was on Facebook, Muslims was coming to Christ. Buddhists was coming to Christ. And I was just a nobody that the Lord used. Yes. We don't say things like I'm broke. I was just using that example, though. But like, you got to be mindful of the things you say. Life and death is really in the power of your tongue. This is my first challenge, but God is showing up. Thank you for joining. This is the biggest challenge I've ever done. We, I think we have close to 12,000 people on it. I know all 12,000 people are not on day 10 or not really in it, but 12, almost 12,000 people signed up. So my prayer is that the those that can make it through, make it through. The majority can make it through. The challenge has absolutely nothing to do with me and everything about you building your relationship with God, you making time for God, you building that intimacy with God, you getting to know him for you, get a breakthrough, which you get a prayer through. You can tap into heaven on your own and knowing your authority and knowing your authority. We just were talking about financial breakthrough too. Amen. Thank you for joining Christy, I think you need to make more videos, Christy. I was looking at your stuff yesterday. I think you need to make more videos. I think the Lord is going to allow you to, to it's going to minister, it's ministering to you, but it's going to minister to other people. It's going to minister to other people as well. So sometimes too, when you're going through a hard season, the Lord will use you to minister to other people. So he's helping you become free. While you're helping other people come for, become free. There's plenty of times I've gotten on here and I'm going through hell. I'm going through hell. But I'm trusting God. But I'm trusting God. That's okay, Lady G. We got plenty of other mods and I'm about to get off anyway. Don't ever, for any of my mods, don't ever feel like I'm, you're obligated to be on here. I'm grateful for y'all. I'm grateful for y'all. And if y'all see this, this is bleach. I don't want anybody to be like, she came over here dirty. No, it's a bleach spot. This is just the old hoodie I wear around the house. Yeah, I think this is the strategy to get to get the gospel off. You know, the enemy doesn't want the um the gospel out here, but the Lord is going to you can't get rid of the word, so he'll find another way. He'll find another platform, he'll find another channel. Um thank y'all. I think that's the most likes I've ever gotten. Thank y'all. 
Thank y'all so much. Yeah, so we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. No, I didn't even know about that. I mean, spiritually, I have some some thoughts on uh, on that. But I think when I've been saying... The other day when I was saying stuff about the government and healthcare, they won't let me download that video. So I think they're like banning me for that type of stuff. Um... I look at it like this. I repent, right? And then I look at it like this. If God could forgive me, I could forgive myself. If God could forgive me, I could forgive myself. This is an all-knowing God. This is the God that created me. I don't stay in there too long. You know what I'm saying? For a second, I feel bad, right? But I don't stay there too long. And then sometimes you got to go into a place of worship, a posture of worship, so you can get that off of you. God, I know I messed up. God, I know. I slept with Jamal. I slept with Portia. <laughs> and I went back to my old ways, God. But I need you. I need a savior. I need you. So I'm going to surrender this to you. I'm going to surrender this to you. <laughs> I'm going to surrender this to you and let it go. It's, that, it's like the woman with the issue of blood. She made that divine exchange. Right? She exchanged her needing healing in exchange for being whole, in exchange for freedom, in exchange for peace. It's God, I'm giving you this and I'm receiving this. And you just got to receive it. You got to receive that forgiveness. You got to receive that forgiveness. And also know your temptations, y'all. How much better is you got to know your temptations? Like for real, for real. If you know, scrolling on Instagram and looking at Big Booty Judy's thing is going to put you in a place where you got to go watch porn and you got to go masturbate you gotta delete instagram right or delete her off you gotta be real with yourself if i know that every time i link up with tahara and jamila we gonna be smoking weed i can't be hanging out with jamila and tahara like that i can't you gotta know your triggers because the bible says for every temptation there is a way of escape we have to take the way of escape y'all it takes discipline it takes spiritual maturity let, let's let's talk to the singles for a second right you, your body may be calling some nights right but you can't entertain that you got to get up maybe you got to get up and worship maybe you got to get up and pray maybe you got to get up and text a friend and be like i'm struggling i need you maybe you got to go and, and take a shower like whatever it is you got to learn how to take those wave escapes yeah if instagram is a trigger delete it if instagram is a trigger delete it you don't need it delete it if it's a trigger, delete it. If you you see, sometimes I come on, the, on on TikTok and I they be showing all these men with their chest out. I'll be like, oh, Lord, let me keep scrolling. You know what I'm saying? We don't want that to, we don't want my imagination to run. And now I'm fantasizing about some dude that probably don't even like women on, it, on TikTok. You got to know your triggers. Know your triggers. Is it Ayanda? Ayanda? That's a pretty name. You got to know your triggers. It's the fine men for me. Natasha, listen. Listen. You got to kill this flesh daily. Die, flesh. Daily. Like, for real. For real. I made a video, I think some months ago. I seen it going viral on um, Instagram. Somebody must have took it from here and put it on Instagram. But I said, I'm saved. I'm single. And I love God. But my body is calling. And I was just talking about how to navigate through that. Because that's a real thing. Some, Especially if you are single and you've had a little taste of something, something before. Your body desires that still. It's, it's, it's a human nature to want. But you can't act on it. If you believe in God for a spouse, if you're living for God for real, for real, you can't act on it. Yeah, fasting does help. But I noticed too with fasting, uh, the enemy likes to show up the last day of the fast just to prove to me, to, to try to, um, to make it seem like I forfeited the fast. I know for me, I've been noticing that about him on certain fasts I've been on, like on the last day of the fast or the day after the fast. He'll try to see if he can tempt me in some type of area. Or get me to tell somebody all. Let me end it. Oh, my God. So the battery. Yeah. My battery died, y'all. All right. I'm going to end it, though. My battery died. I guess y'all can still see me, right? Okay. All right, y'all. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I think it's. Okay, you can still see me. Where did I leave off? I don't even remember. 
Oh, knowing your triggers. You got to know your triggers, y'all. Okay, know your triggers. See, I don't, my charger thing is like, I can't set the phone up. So anyway, I'm going to get off. But just know your triggers, y'all. If you know that being around somebody is going to cause you, lead you to another way, you can't hang around them. Sometimes it's your own family. You got to follow the Lord. You got to follow the Lord and make it. It's discipline. Yeah, it's discipline. I know it's easier, easier sound, said than done because, you know, I didn't been tempted before too. Um, but Jesus was tempted and he did all right. It's the first time I'm going to fast. It's good. Do one that's doable for you. So if right now you can't do, um, if you can't do from 6 to 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., don't do that. Maybe try 7 to 12. So do one that will fit you, right, for where you are. So I don't want to tell people that's just starting to fast. You, you got to just suck it up and do it. No, I'm not going to tell you that. Just do one that's right for you. Or maybe right now you just need to do Daniel. Maybe right now you just need to do Daniel. Hey, Kendra. Yeah, I'm about to get off. To those that's just joining, we're about to get off. I just, my battery died. Um, and I didn't know you can come back into the live. Um... Yeah, so we'll download this and get this on. Hey, Alvina, we'll download this and get this onto YouTube again. Love you too. Again, my YouTube is uh, I Need a Word. It's the one with the six thousand followers. Or you could go to my bio, my um, you could go to my uh, bio, my profile, and um, get the go to click where it says Instagram, and then it says YouTube under that when you click it. You can download my podcast. It's called Faith Lifestyle with Quanda Renee. I did. I gave a bunch of pointers out, y'all. I can't repeat them because my phone's dying. So I'm going to upload this on YouTube so you can watch this on YouTube. Uh, Maria, is it Maria or Marlia? Go on Google and type in scriptures for renewed mind because I don't have them on the top of my head. Scriptures for a renewed mind or type in scriptures for a battle in the mind. It'll give you both. Bible study tools is a good uh, resource. You can go to Bible study too. Shout out to Trinidad and Tobago. My um, ancestors are from there. My uh, great grandparents uh, left Trinidad to come to America. I've never been though. I've never been though. I did give out pointers. We were talking about financial breakthrough. We we're talking about financial breakthrough. Thank you all for the gifts. I don't think I got that many likes before. Thank you all. I appreciate that. All right, I'm rambling. I gotta go, y'all. The battery is uh, still charging. So I'll put this on YouTube. And you can rewatch this. Hey, Jesus is Lord. We're getting ready to go. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. We should be back on tomorrow morning between the hours of 9 and uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, we're going into day 11 of our 21-day intimacy with God challenge. If you want to know more about the challenge, if you click on my profile, uh, there is a video that explains what the challenge is about. Um, and you can join the challenge by going to the link in my bio. I'll see you guys soon. If it lets me end it. Okay.